Hey everyone, and welcome back to another chill tutorial here on my channel. Now, if you're a fan of CK Productions or subscribe to the channel, you probably have already seen the Majora's Mask Logic in Real Life video that we put out on Friday. And in going through and editing that, I decided I wanted to show you guys how I made Tattle the fairy here. And Tattle the fairy here is, you know, he's from the actual game Majora's Mask. And in previous videos that we've done other Zelda logics and other Zelda in Real Life videos, We've done Navi in the past, and basically it's kind of the same formula to make that. It's a pretty simple process, so let's dive right in here. And as always, before we get started, be sure to like and subscribe. I post videos every Sundays and Thursdays. Let's get right into it. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make the glow that's in the middle of Tattle or a Tail or whoever, Navi or whatever fairy that you're doing. This is more of a generic fair, Zelda fairy tutorial because they all kind of look at the same in the game. So there's a couple ways to do that. Um, there's a, the best way to do that is if you have the plugin from Video Copilot called Optical Flares. I'm gonna go ahead and you can add that to a solid layer here. And go to the options here and we're gonna strip it dry. Clear it of all of these things here. And just add it in the glow. That's all we need. All we need is that little glow right there. And obviously, if you don't have this plugin, um, get it because it's amazing. It's one of my favorite plugins that I've used thousands of times over the year. I'm not even exaggerating. I'm, thousands of compositions have had this effect in it from CK videos to other stuff to whatever. But if you're one of those people that just don't have this for some reason or, or, or didn't get their hands on it somehow, you can generate a lens flare from the built-in options here in After Effects or at, I'm sure there's other resources where you can find lens flares for uh, After Effects compositions. So, um, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our little glowing light here. There's a couple things we want to do to this optical flares. First of all, um, we want to pick the color that we're doing because Na Navi is normally the, uh, the blue white color color here, but we're doing Tattle from Majora's Mask and Tattle's a little bit more yellow. Let me make her a bit more yellow. Like so. And obviously, you know, if you're making one of those fairies you catch in a bottle and you kidnap and they you make them bring you back to life that would be a pink fairy do that first step and you kind of decide the color of your fairy here and we want to um to this base composition we want to kind of build up the size just a little bit here um actually we probably want to you want to kind of limit this fall off here because you don't want it to be super crazy bright but we do want we want a pretty good core in the center here. It's kind of looking like a sun, like a star. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so feel fiddle with it until you get to a spot that you're pretty happy with. I'm just gonna go with that. Last thing we want to do is we want to add a little flicker because we want the fairy to flicker a little bit. The uh, flicker adds, you know, a little bit more life to the composition because you don't want, you just don't want the light just sitting there by itself, not, you know, flickering or admitting any, doing any movement or anything, so. That's, that's nice, that's nice here. All right, so next step is we're gonna go do the wings. And I kind of have a method I've done over the years of doing the wings. It's sort of kind of a cheat method, but it it really, honestly, it really works. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna grab, of course I can't find it now. All right, we'll do this. Hi, Mooney, what are you doing? We're gonna do this from scratch scratch. So we go ahead and we just got type in like Navi, Navis tires, no. Navi Zelda. I'm just gonna grab this first image here, throw it into composition, and then we're gonna do that, and then we're done. That's very Okay, so we're gonna use this. I'm gonna use this for the wings here. For sort of the, you know, the, inspiration of the shape of the wings here. So we're gonna go ahead and make a white solid. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hide that solid and we're gonna make a mask on that solid following the shape of the wing here. So just go through, I'm gonna do this a little quicker than you guys probably would back at home. Um, so make a mask around the outline here. Just using this as a reference. Make sure to do uh, sort of the curves here that you see on the mask and 
use your tools to be able to make as accurate of a mask as possible here. And there we go. That's our, uh, that's our shape here for our wing. Pretty dang cool. And now we're gonna go in, we're gonna do um, the lower wing here and make another white solid for that. We should probably label these upper wing, right? Lower wing, right? Okay, cool. All righty. So put this on top here, hide it and do the same thing for the bottom. You know, I think for one of the videos, I actually just kind of cut out and used this, these actual wings from this photo here and just kind of brightened it up and got like rid of all the detail or whatever. Don't do that. Like that's a dumb way to do it. Do it this way. It's much better. Okay. So lower wing, upper wing. Cool. We can get rid of this uh, reference anymore, but Brian, we didn't finish the other wings. What do we do now? How do we, uh, we have to finish the wings. We need that back. We don't need that back because all you have to do is just duplicate it and then rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis. There's your other wing right there. So a couple things we want to do now, we're obviously we want to duplicate these wings. So we have four wings here, not up to where you want them. Well, what's going on here? That was weird. Um, okay, so line them up to where you want them. Okay, so once you have them lined up here, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to pre-comp all of these different wings together, not together, separately actually. Uh, moving them to each to new composition. Uh, you're gonna have to do the, the anchor point again, forgot about that one. Um, you're gonna do that for each one and I'll explain why in a second. There's a good reason for it. The good thing about this effect is um, even though it takes a little while in the startup, um, you don't have to redo it for each shot, that tattle or whoever your fairy is in. Uh, you can just copy and paste, you know, the model of the anything that you, any type of composition that you're working on. So that's pretty neat. All right, we have it set up here. Uh, turn all of these on to 3D. We're gonna go in, we're gonna add a glow. Like add a glow to each of these wings because Right now, the wings are just a little too flat. There's too much edge to them. We want to make the edge a little bit more ambiguous. Because it's a yellow one, we, maybe we want to make the yellow glow here as well. Basically, however you guys want to make it. And then just go ahead and apply that to the rest of them. So the whole flat fairy is glowing now. This is a good opportunity we can go. Um, Maybe I wanted to make it a little bit more yellow. Okay, so uh, last step that we're gonna do here, for the fairy is we're gonna go and we're gonna do flaps. Oh, wow, that was a bad voice crack. We're gonna do the flaps here. So all we're gonna do is for the first frame, we're gonna pull that wing back, rotate it on a couple of different axes here. That's the flap back. And then we're gonna go forward, bring the flap forward. And I know it's a little, it looks a little funky here, but you see the actual animation, it, it works. And then you wanna adjust it so, it's, it's, not fle it's not going too fast, it's not going too slow. Grab the first set of frames, put that in forward, see if, how a full flap looks. And then basically from there, I'm just gonna copy and paste this section over and over and over again. You're gonna just loop it the entire way. Boop, 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 boop. Take that section. It's a good tip when you're, you're uh, doing repeating keyframes like this. Just grab the biggest sections and then just copy them on top of each other, basically, until you reach the end. Um, that's basically, and and doesn't look quite right right now, just because we don't have motion blur turned on. Now that we have motion blur turned on, it looks much better. 
last thing we're going to do with these, we're also going to make these uh, easy ease. We're going to ease them. It's going to make the, um, the wing flap a little bit more smoother. And all we have to do from here is we're going to go ahead and just do the same thing for the other part of the wing here too. And I'm just going to jump into the, the kind of the finished product here. So after that, you have both wings flapping at the same time here. And there you have it. That's the steps that you have to making the actual ferry itself. Now, from here, what you would do is you would take this composition, you would take this and you would put it into one of your shots here. So for example, for this shot here, got ferry the ferry coming out here. You put the whole composition in that you made and put it in here and you put it in screen mode. So normal mode looks like that. And the glow, the glow doesn't look right here on normal mode. So we're gonna go and do it, put it on screen. It makes everything glow a little bit more. One also important thing to do is we have to put a mask around the center here because if we don't put a mask around the center, you're gonna see the edges of the composition you're doing. So that just kind of prevents the glow from going too far. Another way to, another way to uh, prevent that is just to make the composition of the fairy bigger, like maybe like 4K or whatever. But, um, and then last part is doing the little particles here. Now, the particles, let's go through the particles from scratch here. So for the particles, um, I'm just using the basic, sometimes I use particular, sometimes I just use uh, the basic particle world in After Effects. This isn't a crazy particle, so I'm just gonna use that. Um, let's go ahead and you make it to a faded sphere here. Bring the earth size down a bit. So it's, it's pretty small and we want it to not be this crazy. We want it to be a little bit more subtle. So our velocity goes down and our gravity kind of goes down a bit. So the, the, uh, the little pixels, the little fairy dust is flying instead of just falling crazily and stuff. Um, but add a little bit more resistance so it doesn't come out as fast. And go ahead and we make the color more of that kind of light yellow, white death color. Make the birth rate. Kind of simple, it's nice and easy. Obviously we're going to animate the position of that to follow wherever Tattle goes. So go from here to there, basically. And that's pretty much it. So the, the good thing about this effect is once you do it for one composition, you can go ahead and you can just copy and paste basically the, the particles and the composition itself into other compositions and go ahead and put it in there. The only thing you have to do when you move it to composition to composition is, is animate any keyframes of position or rotation or whatever, and then animate the track of the uh, yellow particles here. It's gonna be really important though, is if you have a, a moving scene, if you got a moving scene where the fairy is moving in Z space, which is a really good effect to do if you're able to do it because it, you know, makes it look realistic and, and effects moving in Z space look really cool is you're going to need to motion track the clip itself to a 3D camera track and there have your track points and you're going to want to have to make a camera and solid in there and use the data points from the solids to, uh, put that in for the position and stuff for the actual ferry itself. I can go over this more in depth in a later uh, tutorial and stuff, but um, that's gonna make the process a little bit more complicated because you have to deal with, um, you know, resizing and repositioning and stuff. And um, that also affects the particles as well because they're, they're a 3D effect. But you know, the, the effect can be really cool if you get it to work out. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, that's how you make a Zelda ferry in After Effects. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel. I post every Thursday and Sunday. Filmmaking, tips, tricks, editing, tutorials, VFX breakdowns, CK productions, behind the scenes, all that fun stuff. And go ahead and post that in the comments below with any other questions or the other effects that you want me to cover on this channel. Maybe some past CK productions effects that we've done and videos that have stood out to you. Um, go ahead and put that down below. And 
And with that, I'll see you guys for the next video. Auto save.